Hey guys, we're back. Another great video time. Um, but first, what is that in there? That is a sleeping, rescued leopard gecko. But is she actually sleeping? No, she's not. Great question though. Is her move in there? Remember, her eyes closed all the time. Uh, she's moving a little bit. So. What are we doing? Why are we back right away? Well, let's see. Everyone can see the title. So we're going to be hand feeding. Uh, but before I get into that, so it's going to note, like, she's shutting again. Why is she shutting again? Well, because she was grossly underweight. And because she's been so underweight, even though her body length is that of mm, sub-adult. I mean, she's, she's getting close to her normal adult length. Um, her mass, her skin, her volume is great, you know, grossly under what it would be for a normal le leopard gecko. So because of this, she sheds often like a baby leopard gecko would. So it's kind of interesting, but we are going to tube feed her. We're going to syringe feed her. Why? Because that's what we do with her. So she's in her humid hide because, you know, she wants to stay damp so her skin will come off. And hey, I'm going to do a video on stuck shed and shed and normal shedding and comparisons between uh, using the leopard geckos, the frog, the bearded dragon, the chameleon, the false chameleon, the blue tongue skink. We're going to go through it all. So don't worry about that. So we're going to we're gonna go ahead and, and we're going to move her to the back for a little bit right now. I know she's not the main star. What, what do we do? Well, what do we need? We need the syringe. Oh, bye -bye. Plastic syringe, um, you don't want a needle, right? And you want to keep it relatively small. I have different size ones depending on the reptile and how big and how much it needs. But just, you know, normal plunger syringe. They make different ones. Some have, uh, you know, a, a scale on the side to tell you how much liquid you're putting in and everything. Typically, those are more important when doing medicines. A mixing container. I like to use, and anyone who uses, has reptile should have something, Repti-Aid. What is Repti-Aid? It's just uh, vitamins for the reptile. I wonder if that will focus. That's good for them, and, uh, you know, it can help them get their, their appetite back. It can help them, like a multivitamin, right? And then I also use from the same company, we got some reptile powdered food here so this is exactly what it's for you have a reptile that's um, got over being sick or struggling eating or needs to be fed with a syringe this is what you're going to use now this is kind of since she's a rescued and she was really in sorry states normally you would just give this to your reptile raw and they make uh, different versions which have different strengths depending on how big your reptile is that you'll be treating and you can use this for treating. I also give them to it uh, once a month. So there's a nice little scale and the scale will be on the box. I wonder if it'll focus. Probably not. Um, about if your animal weighs this much, there we go, how many drips or milliliters to give the animal. And then to give orally for this amount of time, long term, ba 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 ba. So, but because kind of, I'm, I got to shock her system back into being good and being normal. So first thing we do with this guy, is we shake it up. Get everything in there that's mixed. And instead of this just shooting this raw into, into her mouth, we're gonna use it as the mixing liquid for the powder. So I take you know half a syringe here and throw it in. That's the equivalent to maybe 10, 15 drops. It, it's a lot. It's a lot, but I don't do it twice a day and I don't do it every day. Um, but it's it's what she needs. It's not maybe what your reptile needs. And you know you should always follow instructions or consult a vet. So then we take that, and she's not good with the powder when it's too thick. So instead of though just giving her the repti aid, I want to make sure she's getting vitamins and she's getting you know the proteins that she needs and everything. So I put in a little bit of this powder. Very simple. It goes on in. Lay that right over there. Lay this here. So you kind of get that mess. I take the syringe. Time for a mix. 
real simple. Just mix them to mix it off camera. Now, once you get it all incorporated, instead of just having that liquid, you've now got slightly tinted liquid. Mm. Syringe in and pull. And I move it around because it's, it's, it's a little bit thicker than what it would be normally, but not too much. Once you've pulled everything out like that, you've got this bad boy. Get the air out so you can see the liquids come down. That's all air. When you push this thing, sometimes you'll see air bubbles. Maybe a little bit will leak out, but mostly bubbles. Push it until just till you see the liquid get into the actual tip of the syringe here. That way you're ready to feed. And we're ready to feed. Now, let's go over the way she's going to react and the way some reptiles will react. Now, some reptiles, I'll just put some of this and squeeze it so it's hanging off the end of the syringe and they love the stuff, they'll go right to it. In fact, all my reptiles do that except the frog. He's a pain in the butt. She hasn't been handled much. She hasn't eaten in a long time other than this. And let's let's be honest, right? If you had just this tube shoved in your mouth, like proportionately, it would be a lot larger. You're not going to like this. So you need to know, one, the reptile that you're handling, what how do they react? So I handle her even when not feeding her just to say, you know, hey, how you doing? I pet her in the morning. I make her know she's loved. I want her to know that my hands are safe, get my feel, get my scent. She licks me, everything. So know the reptile, how they behave. Know what the reptiles, uh, what they can do. So here's key. Leopard geckos, right? They can drop their tail. If they get scared, they're running from a predator, they'll drop their tail. Their tail will grow back if they're healthy enough, but it doesn't grow back the same and it doesn't function the same. And that's a big misconception. So a lot of times, especially any reptiles that have bones in their tails, if there's damage lost to a bone structure, they can grow that back, but it's not the same. It doesn't look the same and it can happen um, often. There's a difference though, just because when I go to feed her here, she's going to try to get away. She's going to throw a tantrum. She sometimes f flips over on her back and kicks her feet around because she's pissed. She, she doesn't want it to be done. She needs it. She doesn't like it. There's a difference between doing something she doesn't like and having her throw her tantrum and, and open her mouth or shake her head like really quick. Um, or go on her back or do a, a, a crocodile death roll. There's a difference between that and scaring the poop out of her so she would drop her tail and feels like she's going to be eaten. So even while I'm doing these things with her, she feels safe. She feels that she's in a safe environment. She just doesn't like what's going on, if that makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the humid hide. And, and like I said, a humid hide is super easy. Cool whip container upside down cut a little cut out right little round whoop, you've made an igloo paper towel in I wet that paper towel with uh, filtered water so it doesn't grow any bacteria on there and then I change that out from time to time normally I just take my spray bottle though squirt it in there keep that nice and damp it stays humid but eventually you know she'll be dirty she'll go in there and I'll need to replace the paper towel with a new one it's just one sheet that's folded over one half sheet actually so this also gives you easy access to the gecko. So you take the lid off, lid goes away, camera will refocus. So keep in mind, we don't know how she'll react, um, but it's not, her life's not in danger. She's not going to drop her tail. She may act mad. She's not in any pain. So, and, and you can see she's kind of looks a little bit more full than before. This is working really well for her, and this is only temporarily until I can get her to feel um, live, you know, roaches and stuff, and maybe have her sniff them out. Maybe keeping her in this tray. You you'll be there for the whole journey, right? Okay. And if you look, her right eye, the one eye that I think is salvageable, every more and more it starts to open more and more. So that's that's really a good sign. What's this little bug here? So, 
We're going to get her. We're going to restrain her. So we're pick her up. Let her know, hey, I'm coming to get you. I'm going to use two hands here. I know I'm going to block the camera. She's a little wet because she was in the humid hide. You can see a little water on her, but she's, she's doing really good. Her arms are still a little skinny, but they're filling out. And, yeah, you're all right. I'm just going to pet her. She's smelling my hand. I'm going to adjust the camera a little bit here. Up, 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 up. Very good, very good. Okay, so she's very calm in my hand. She's just smelling my inner hand right there. Breathing, taking it easy. Everything's fine. I'm going to bring the syringe up to her nose here. She definitely can smell it. She knows something's going to happen. She knows she's going to be fed. So she's going to get ready for feeding time. So there's a way that I'm going to do this. I'm going to position her. I'm going to take her off camera to put her in the position. I'm going to flip her around so I can get a grip on her head. Like so. Not squeezing, not hurting her, but I want you to notice something. When you stroke her neck skin down here, you'll see, watch this, see how it opens her mouth a little bit right there? Just a little bit. See, it's closed, and now it's open just a touch, right? Because you're pulling her skin, it's pulling back on her bottom jaw. She's got a, loose, a lot of loose skin back there because she's like all bags and bones. Just that right there. It's just going to be enough. I'm going to use my left pointer finger here to just pull back on that neck skin just a little bit, opening it to get that crack. I'm going to go in with this facing up because I'm going to go in and pry down because remember the bottom is what's going to open. So let's see how well we can get this on camera. So she's licking it. She knows something's going on. Position her a little bit better. Pull back. Come on in. Come on in a little bit more. And it's in. And then just going to do a little squirt and that's it. She's pissed but she's fine. And you saw, if you saw that syringe move, quite a bit went in there, um, but not a lot. You don't want them to choke, right? You can gently stroke the reptile's neck and that will give them the, give them the instinct to swallow if they need to. Boom, there it was right there, did you see that? And so that's key. You go through their neck and that's gonna give them the instinct if they have something in their mouth, they swallow. You want to do this for a few reasons. So she, as well as most of my reptiles can sometimes be notorious if you're doing something they don't like to pretend that they're going to go along with it. You put some of the liquid in their mouth, you think, hey, sweet, they're done. You put them in their cage, they, they're they watching you, they're watching you. The second you turn around, they, they duck their head around the corner and they spit it out, right? Just like you would do at a relative's house when you spit your bad food into a napkin. So you want to make sure that they swallow. That's the key. So now we're going to go again, otherwise you're just wasting your time, you're stressing your animal out for no reason. Got her in a good position. Pull back, hold the head, not squeezing the head, but just holding the head. Pull back, the neck's been, the mouth's been open just a touch. And go in, pry the lip. She's going to try to turn her head away. And it's in, and a little bit goes in. Now. She's tipping her head back, so she's going to take it back. I'm going to tip her head down so we can catch her on camera. It's very vicious looking. One other thing that you may see when you do this, and maybe I'll show you. If you get food on her mouth, if there's a lot, you can come back with the syringe and put it there and suck it out and get it. Um, but typically, if it's on their lip, on the bottom, on the middle, she'll just lick it up. She'll know that something is there and she'll look it up. Okay, cool. She just swallowed, so we can do more. So you don't you do want to though, if you get a lot of food on her, and there's a chance we will because she'll spit some out, you do want to wash her off after. You don't want it to get crusty, get in her eye, get move it around, get it mixed with maybe some of her waste product, which then she sees is on her mouth and then she eats. You're just trying to keep it as sanitary as possible. So here we're gonna come in again. Boom. Okay. So there's a little bit right on the side of the cheek right there. This is perfect. Oh no, maybe it would be perfect. Now she's choosing to freak out. Let's see if we can get that. Oh, she sucked it in. Okay, so there was a bubble there. Come on, focus on her. I would go in and I'd suck that up. Now, there's another key thing. So when you're getting to the end, 
the black part of the plunger can only come to the tip of the 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 big the syringe here but the tip of it is obviously further so you will have some left over even when you've pushed this all the way so you want to get this kind of close and I've been doing it relatively slow but that way on the last feeding to maximize you kind of just give it up a, a hard pop that way it'll push it in the air and everything it will just have enough oomph to just push everything forward so we're almost done She's eating really well. We're going to come in again. I like to get these close-ups because I want you guys to see the mouth, see how everything reacts. This is very good for educational purposes. So just going to come on in here. Going to get right on in. Aim it. Squeeze it little by little. And now I'm going to stop. She's going to eat all that. She would have been able to eat more, but I've saved that little bit of space for that preemptive push, and you'll see it. She's gonna tip her head up, she's gonna drink it down. We're gonna massage the gullet here. Everything's been going really well. And you see she's not really throwing her tantrum today. She's getting more used to the hand holding, uh, the, the handling, and she's getting more used to these feedings. Before she, she went crazy before. Okay, cool, she just swallowed, there it is. I could see her getting ready for it. And now we got just this little bit left. So here we go. Line it up. Oh, now she's a little bit mad. It's all right. It's okay. She may be saying she's full, but I know how much she needs to intake. And we need to get this little bit in her, whether she likes it or not. Line up. Come on. Oh, she's clamping down hard. We're going to give her a second. Give her a second. Reposition her. You know, she could be getting agitated. She doesn't know this is the last one. She could be thinking she's going to be here all night. Get a good grip. Come here. Come on in. Pull the lip back. Line up. And it's so little bit left. Come on. There we go. And come on. A little bit more. I know. You're really struggling now. This is good though because it really shows me she's building up some strength. And with the lip open like this, watch this. There it goes in. We're going to show it going in. Very important. Okay. Extreme close up. So you guys get to see the inside. Oh, there she goes. She swallowed it down. She's got a little bit on the outside of her mouth there. I'm going to put her under the little drizzle of water and I'm going to give her a wash and then I'm going to re-wet this humid hide. But that's it guys. This has been up close feeding, hand feeding out of a syringe, a rescued leopard gecko. I look forward to showing you guys more videos. Okay, everybody take care and don't hesitate to send me questions, guys. I love answering questions. I love helping you guys take care of reptiles you have maybe rescued or reptiles that you have and you just want to make sure they're doing good. I love interacting with you guys, so it's all good. Everybody take care. Say bye, Ariel. Say goodbye to them. Yeah, there you go. Bye, guys. There we go. There's no better way to end it other than she's, clean, she's cleaning up her own mouth. All right, everyone. Take care. Catch you all later.